In this video, we're going to be doing some focus bracketing with the Canon R5. Hello, my name is Stuart Wood and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be having a play with some focus bracketing, a feature that is on the Canon R5 and the EOS RP. Now, this is the last day I have with the R5. I want to thank Richie, my buddy, for allowing me to use his new camera. He's picking it up later, so we're going to definitely have a play with this feature. Focus bracketing is a method of taking a series of pictures with different focusing points, then merging the after in software to give our image a higher depth of field than is possible using the lens and camera combination. It's a great technique for capturing higher depth of field when it's not possible with the equipment you use. This technique can only be done using an autofocus lens. So the focus bracketing on the R5 is a very easy thing to understand. What it does is you set your focusing point with your camera and then the actual camera will move the focusing backwards and take pictures. Now, unlike other cameras like um, the Olympuses and stuff like that, the Canon R5 does not process the image internally. So what happens is you got to take those pictures into the computer and stack them manually. So this is the shot we're going for. I'm hoping it will work with focus stacking because again anyone who's a regular to the channel knows that my computer can't really handle focus stacking but we are going to attempt it. So that's our Salsify seat, let's place it onto my tripod and I want to get it looking um, flat onto the camera if possible. Let's see what we got out of that, I'm going to go to one to one on my lens. I'm going to set the scene up first then we will talk about the actual focus stacking itself. Let's see what we got. Yes, something like that. What I would like is for it to be coming down the corner. You know what, actually, I kind of like that. You've seen me do this a load of times. We set up a, a dandelion clock or a salsify seed. We spray water on it, water drops, and then we stick them in the background. In this one, I'm going to be using a sunflower. But I want to mostly talk about the actual process of the focus stacking in this image. So the first thing I want to do is to set up the camera uh drive mode i want single shooting on the drive mode look here operation on that we want one shot i'm going to set my white balance to a daylight kelvin number so we're going to go to the um the color temperature and we're going to go to 5600 which is what all these lights are calibrated to that way the white balance isn't going to change between shots I'm going to set the lens to a nice sweet spot on this particular lens. F4 and above is uh, quite sharp. I'm going to set my ISO to 100. Right, next, we want to bring down our shutter speed. Right, so now I'm going to bring up one of my old video lights. Okay, so I'm going to plug that in. Turn it on. Maximum brightness. And again, only on the background. Right, let's see this now. So now I can adjust my exposure, get something that I like. We're not going to be able to play around too much with this until we get the water drops on the actual uh, Salesforce seed. Now talking of water drops, when the water drops are on there, they're going to evaporate quickly. So I need to know what this camera is going to do and how long it's going to take. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a test stack. So let's go into the menu now and I need to go to the camera operation and into number five and then focus bracketing we are going to enable that i'll leave the number of shots to 100 focus increment i'm going to set that to one number of shots is quite straightforward that's how many shots it's going to take before it ends focus increment is how far the focusing will move between shots we're going to bear in mind is it's going to go from one to one to infinity so if we look there we're not really getting what i want so i need to move the salsify seed a little bit forward till it goes blurred then as we focus back we'll probably end it around there we don't want the whole scene in focus this is mainly because i want to see how long it's going to take to uh, get this done so the next thing i want to do is i want to set uh, my timer to a two second timer there we go. And the reason I'm setting two second timers is because I'm on floorboard, so there's going to be a little bit of vibration. It's one of the reasons I don't do much focus stacking here on this uh, setup. We have autofocus on. Yep, I'm going to 
make sure my exposure is correct and then click the shutter button. So you can see that it's taking a bunch of shots, it's moving the focusing. So that is actually very, very quick. And we're literally, we're only moving a 0.2 of a uh, magnification to get all of that in there. Let me quickly interrupt this video to ask you, have you checked out my macro presets? I created 16 beautiful presets for macro photography that are perfect for a starting point in editing your photos. Click on the link below to check them out or go to stuartwood.com to purchase. And now back to the video. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is I'm just going to move that to the side. We're going to spray uh, this Salsify seed. So now I know how quickly this camera is going to do it because I didn't know if it'd be a two second timer in between shots. So now I know what it's going to do. I know that these drops are not going to evaporate very quickly. I'm just going to keep spraying. Keep, keep spraying, keep spraying, keep spraying, keep spraying. When you think there's enough on there, keep on spraying, keep on spraying, keep on spraying. And I like that. So my alternative camera there is it's not having a very good time with this light, but you just have to put up with it, okay? So let's take a look at this now. So you can see what we're trying to get. What I want to do now, though, is position this sun flare so it's in the middle. All right. Is that going to be high enough for our needs? Yeah, that's good. So it's nice and bright. All right. So you notice I'm underexposing the shot, and that's because the metering in the camera is reading the dark background and saying it's underexposed, when in fact it's not. So we're going to have to go to about there. Okay. Right into the menu. It's still enabled, and now we are ready to do our stack. So are you ready? Here we go. That's how you do focus bracketing on the Canon EOS R5. I really wish this feature was on the EOS R. I don't know why they didn't put it on, because it is on the RP, which is the, um, the entry-level full-frame mirrorless camera. So why it's not on the R, I don't know, but that's just Canon and uh, the way they do things so yeah here are some more images i created using this focus bracketing with the canon r5 all these images have been edited in lightroom using my macro presets And again, your results will vary. Ideally, you want to use a lens that has very minimum focus breathing. That's when the image shifts as you focus. That way you're getting a better stack. I personally, I prefer to move the camera back and forward when doing the stacks. And we're going to be doing another video of stacking using a macro rail. So that will show you how the camera moves back and forward for stacking. So subscribe if you are looking forward to that video. But for now, my name is Stuart Wood. And again, as always, I'll see you on the next video. In this video, we're going to be doing some focus bracketing with the Canon R5. Got it right first time. It's much appreciated now, forget that. So the focus bracketing. So what I want to do first is set up the camera for focus bracketing. No, 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 no. That way the, um, the I'm going to set my focus increment is how far the focusing will move between um but well, this is mainly because i want to see what 